Alrighty, again, we got to talk about another rule. Remember we talked about the product quotient rule a minute ago, or maybe 20 minutes ago, depending on when you looked at that. Now we're going to talk about the chain rule, which is a way that will enable you to differentiate anything under the sun. Absolutely anything. And let's start with some simple things that are not covered by the product rule or the quotient rule. Let's start with something like the derivative of some ugly thing. Well, that's not terribly ugly. It's 3x minus 1, but to the hundredth power. Now, huh, this is a product of a hundred things. You could multiply it all out. You have a hundred terms. You go on and on and on and on. And uh, maybe by tomorrow, you'll be done and having made about 20 errors. So let's try another way. Think of this as some glob. Where's my glob pen? There it is. A glob. raised to the hundredth power. And the chain rule, which could be thought of as the glob rule, is simply a way of saying that the derivative of a glob to a power is, and here's the answer, a hundred globs, let's write glob, to the power minus one. But that's not all. Then we have to multiply by the derivative of the glob. Now, the derivative of the glob, in this case, is just 3. So we multiply by 3. Derivative. And in goes the glob here. The original glob. And that's the answer. Now, of course, that looks terribly ugly. So 3 times 100 is 300. And then we're done. So, in words, the derivative of a glob to a power is the power glob to the power minus 1 just as though it was x, times the derivative of the glob. You're always going to forget the derivative of the glob. I know you are, because I've had experience with that. Don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the glob. Let's try one more. How about putting something more interesting inside as the glob? Let's try, say, x plus 3 times e to the x, 3 e to the x. And oh, what power should we try? Let's try a power like minus 3, just to be awful. Again, here's a glob, so I'm going to make it look globby. The derivative of a glob to a power is the power times the glob. Now, you don't have to draw the glob quite as elaborately as this. Glob to the power minus 1, which is to the negative 4. Multiply, now I'm going to knock it this one more time, times the derivative of the glob, which is, if you take the derivative of the glob, you'll get 1. Remember the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so the derivative of 3 e to the x is 3 e to the x. This constant goes along. Right. That's the answer. Now, this can't really be simplified much, so I'm going to leave it like that, except before you hand it into your teacher, please erase the glob marks because then the teacher will not know what you're talking about for all these gloves. But that's kind of a secret. Okay. Happy with that? We're going to try one more example, this time the square root. Now I have to remind you about what the derivative of the square root is. Many students love saying, well, the square root of x is just x to the half, and then go from there. But I don't like that. I mean, it's, you know, these, these half exponents are kind of ugly. One way of writing the derivative of the square root of x, because it's 1 half x to the negative of a half, you can write it like this. It's 1 over twice radical x. And that's a much nicer way of writing the derivative, because it's useful, it's simple, no funny exponents that are a half, and negative exponents, which are even worse. And you can, you can solve equations that look like this rather than negative exponents. So this is the derivative of the square root of x. What's the derivative of the square root of a blob? And the chain rule once again says, pretend the blob was just x. Now, I'm not even going to put anything in the blob yet. I'm just going to write the rule. 1 over twice square root of the blob. In other words, instead of x, just put a blob wherever you see an x. And then multiply it by the derivative of the blob. Don't forget to do that. Always.
And that is the chain rule for square root. Let's do an example. And the example will be obtained by filling in the block. So let's do, for instance, the derivative of the square root of, oh, let me see, I don't know, something simple, not so terrible, then 3x plus 2. According to this, I'm not going to do the blobbing now. So you have to think of this as a blob. It's 1 over twice the square root of that blob. The original blob, do not take the derivative. Yet, then, you multiply the answer by the derivative of the inside, by the derivative of the blob, which is 3. So you can kind of compress the answer to make it look nicer. 3 over twice the square root. 3x That wasn't so bad. And that's all there is to the chain rule. The chain rule says if instead of an x you have a blob, blob, then replace x by the blob throughout in the answer, and then just multiply by the derivative of the blob. Let's try it on some other kind of function, like e to the x. We know the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Therefore, the derivative of e to a glob is e to the glob times the derivative of the glob. All right. So the derivative of e to the glob is e to the glob. These globs are getting hard to draw. Times the derivative of the glob. d by dx of the glob. And that's it. Nothing more to it. An example, well, fill your favorite thing in the blob and you're done. For example, what's the derivative of e to the x squared minus 1? There's the blob, x squared minus 1. I'll just faintly blob it for you. The answer is e to the little blob, x squared minus 1. Notice I have not touched the blob yet. Then you multiply by the derivative of the blob. The derivative of x squared minus 1 is 2x. Now, people usually, when they write an answer like this, put the 2x in front so that you don't have to put the dot or anything. So you can just write it more neatly. Not too bad. Now we're going to do one example that kind of seems to combine the chain rule and the product rule, or quotient rule. And let's see what we're going to do in that case. So let's look at this. 3x plus 1 multiplied, oh, I'm going to raise it to the 10th power, multiplied by e to the x. OK. Now, pretend you were calculating this the old-fashioned way by hand. You know, there's not the derivative, just the inside. And I said, OK, x is 328. Calculate what this is. You take out your calculator. The last thing you would do when you're calculating this quantity is multiply. Because you first calculate what this is, then you calculate what that is, maybe jot the answer down, and then multiply those two answers. Because the last thing you do is multiply, this is a product. This little kind of thought experiment I'm talking about is called the calculator thought experiment, which is in that very good book referred to in Applied Calc Org, namely uh, Applied Calculus by Wayne and Costanova. So be sure to get the book, by the way. Anyway, here, this is a product. What rule do you use if you have a product? Mm -hmm. Quotient rule? No, product rule. Yes. Which means I have to take the derivative of the first. Now, I don't want to take the derivative of the first. It looks kind of complicated. The first thing is this whole big thing. I guess let me make it red. So it doesn't look like a glob. Well, maybe I do. Maybe it's not so bad. Because this is a glob to the 10, right? So the derivative of a glob to the 10 is 10 globs to the 10 minus 1, right? Times the derivative of the glob, which is 3. OK, so taking the derivative of the first thing wasn't so bad. Now remember, this is a quotient. This is a product. This is the derivative of the first. That's right, derivative of the first. And I'm going to multiply that by the second one left alone. Then, as usual, the product will be add to that first one left alone, 3x plus 
1 to the 10 multiplied by the derivative of the second. And the second one, conveniently enough, is e to the x. So when you take its derivative, you just get the same thing again. So here we manage to do a product, one of whose terms needed the chain rule to calculate. I think we might have time for one more example. If we don't, maybe we don't have time for one more example. I think the best thing to do is to go to the next video, which will be the sequel, in which we'll calculate the derivative of even more complicated functions. So, see you next time. Bye-bye.